who were the players you looked up to first? Like growing oh, up? Oh, when I was little? Oh, yeah. man. Ronaldo. That was my guy. Brazilian Ronaldo. Ronaldo. Oh, yeah. The real one. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The real one. No, no, I'm yeah. just kidding. The, oh, the I played with phenomenal one. They always say that. Oh, man. That guy. I was a big fan, you know, when I was in college. Like, he, he he's kind of my age. So, when I was... In, in 1994, he was 17, you know, in the World Cup. And um, and he didn't play, but everybody talked about him. And I haven't seen him at the time. You know, I was like, oh, who's this guy or whatever. But once he hit Barcelona, I watch a lot of his games. Even though in Venezuela, you know, we didn't have all the games. It's not like now. I remember I bought his cleats and everything. I was like, big fan. I was like, wow, that guy. He was a beast. He was definitely a beast. He's the best striker all of all times like even though he got injured and all these things when you see what he did or how he did it it was amazing it was just natural it was both legs it was just amazing i love david beckham as well like i, I what, whatever he did you know his his passing game was like crazy every time i watch a, a man U game i was like wow this guy's foot is so educated with ronaldo obviously he was a good player but what do you think of his like hairstyles that he's had throughout the year Oh my oh, gosh, that, that was awful. That part, the way he cut his hair, that was awful. Like really awful. And I'm telling you, I'm like, what is this guy doing? But, it, you know, if you see it nowadays, they, they do all crazy stuff. But he was very crazy back then. I know? agree. So you're going you're gonna to take after his game, but not after his hairstyles? Oh, 100%. <laughs> uh, good. From, you know, from, from here down. Here, terrible, man. <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> Uh, was playing professionally always like the dream growing up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, since you're little, if if you play soccer, I think that's everybody's dream when you're little. And and you play in a good team. If you play in a social team or whatever, then you might not have that dream. But uh, but when you have like a travel team, and I went to Brazil when I was like eight, you know, so that was kind of, oh my gosh, I'm going to Brazil and stuff like that. I came to Miami a couple of times for, for tournaments. What I will do is I will go to a club, country club, in in my hometown, Barquisimeto. And then from nine till five, we'll just do everything. Swimming and basketball and rollerblading and all those things. So yeah. But always football. You always wanted to be a football. You never like dreamed of being like a professional swimmer. Because for me, yeah. I played all the sports as well growing up. And I wanted yeah. to be a professional hockey player. That's what I always used to say. Oh, you're Canadian, bro. Uh, it's in my blood, right? <laughs> Everybody wants to be a professional a hockey player over there. Um, so, like we said, eight years playing professionally, you played in the U.S. and in Venezuela. Um, any good stories, like best moments, favorite moments that you maybe have, maybe even like a locker room story that uh, <laughs> not everyone gets to hear? There's a gazillion story. Let me try to think of one. <laughs> in Caracas, the coach was pretty tough and, and the physical trainer was really, you know, tough as well. So... It was it was awful preseason, man. Back then it was awful. So we'll wake up at six in the morning at the beach in like a resort. And then we'll just Doesn't have sound like, not bad. We'll do the running in the morning, then we have breakfast at nine, and then we have gym at eleven thirty, and then we had lunch and then sleep and then four o'clock another train. So it was a triple session. And it was awful. But I remember one of the guys, he was kinda oh, a little overweight, you know. So they were controlling him the food or whatever. And, uh, and we were like, you know, eating. And then one the coach is like, Hickley, come here. And the guy was like, oh, shit. So he was walking out. And then he put copola arepas. You know, it's, it's like a Venezuelan food. It's mm -hmm. like a little pancake in, in their pocket, in his pockets. And the coach caught him. And I was like, bro, come on. <laughs> and I was like, we had it. because he couldn't eat. They, they control his food. It was hilarious, man. Everybody was making fun of that guy. So you obviously ended uh, your career playing for Miami FC. I was going through the internet trying to see some highlights of you, and I saw a goal that you scored against the Vancouver Whitecaps. Is obviously before that they uh, they made it to the MLS, but uh, you know, jumped up like a salmon, got your head to the ball, and scored a nice goal, little goal. Do you remember that goal? One hundred percent. Yeah, that. And you know, it's funny because I remember because I got a yellow card. I was celebrating, and in my my girlfriend at the time was pregnant, so I said, "Oh, I'm gonna put the ball here." And he just gave me a, red, a yellow card. I was like, what are you doing? Like, everybody can do it. 
So, I mean, kind of transition, we've spoken, uh, you know, not on this uh, before you kind of mentioned to me that you're representing players now. Uh, and I actually love how you, you worded it to me and I have the quote here, trying to help players dreams come true. Mm -hmm. uh, how has that been? What's it like kind of working on the other side of the business, you know, previously as a player and, and now as an agent? See, I did it. You know, the funny thing is that I started like two years ago. I didn't have a good experience with, with an agent back then in Venezuela that I gave him a player, you know, and I told him, well, let's just work this player together or whatever. And, and I never, you know, it was like, I gave him the player and never heard of him anymore. And I knew it was kind of dirty. And so I said, you know what, I'm not just going to do it. But two years ago in Barcelona, I met uh, Ansu Fati's agent. And, um, and he asked who when, you know, he was in Barcelona, B, whatever. And he asked me for a Venezuelan player. And then another friend, a good friend of mine, his son was in Belgium. So I went to Belgium as well to see him. So I started grabbing a couple of players. And that's how I got involved. Do you think kind of like your, your name, your, your brand kind of helps now with agencies? Or when you're talking to like football teams, do they just have really no idea of like, your, your past experience in the entertainment they might stuff. they might know or might not i don't i don't i don't wait on that how am i gonna know the guy in paratinaikos sporting director i was afraid of that i was like nah boring i don't even know a guy in belgium but then you start getting to know so the connections are quicker all right but the connections are quicker for everybody so there's a, a tons of players that are sent everywhere I say to the players, let's map something. Where do you want to go? Oh, I want to go to Manchester City. Okay, you're how old are you? 20, okay. When you're 24, you might be able to go there, but we have to put you to play in certain places so then we might have the chance. But if you don't play, then it's pointless. Because I can, we cannot go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Like people, do you know about Instead and Y Scout? Oh yeah, of course. That's, that's huge okay. nowadays. So nowadays it's like, I put your name, put, I know how many saves you have, how many... Uh, Ball control, not good, left foot. They have the stats. Back then, in my time, they didn't have that. And, and I feel that hurts players. Because, because it's all so easy to get it right. And if you haven't team. played, if, you, if you're good and you're 19 and you haven't played anywhere, you're nowhere. Yeah. Like, you're like, oh, he's great. Let me see. No stats, no teams, no professional. Okay, he's not that good. If he was good, he would be playing. So... That's part of it. You know, I feel like th there's this opportunity of finding young talent in America as well. So obviously representing players, I like that, but I'm now doing my part. I'm trying to represent you. I've been speaking okay. to the coaching staff here. I've been speaking to Angus, the GM here. I'm trying to get you, you know, when we start preseason, you know, I want to make sure you're my locker buddy. You're right next to me. You got your kit and everything sorted. I mean, I guess, as an agent now representing you, my question would be like, how do you think, you know, first day, how would you do on the beep test? Terrible, terrible, <laughs> terrible. No, listen, I'm a, I'm a box. You know, the semicircle on the box. That's uh -huh. it. That's me right there. Just leave me there. That's your zone. Leave me, there. leave me there for a bit, you know, process, whatever. I'll do my job. For York United fans watching, how many goals do you think you'd score? Let's just say we play 30 games. Let's say 12 goals. Again, I'm speaking to Angus. I'll let you know what they say, and uh, hopefully good. the contract comes in the in the mail. Yeah, you know, salary cap. Hey, so, hey, uh, what's the salary cap there? How is how's the Canada League doing? Is it, it's just really starting right now, right? Yeah, it's obviously brand new, and then we were really put on hold because of the, well, the pandemic, like you were saying. Um, but the first year in 2019, um, it was unbelievable. I loved it. Um, I think it blew my expectations away. And that even players who played in Germany and Europe, played in bigger leagues that were playing in there, uh, sorry, in Canada the first year, even they were saying like, wow, it was, uh, they were surprised of, of how professional it was, the standard good. of play. Um, it was good. Obviously there's room to grow and, and things will get better as it goes, but uh, it, it's awesome. It's an awesome league to play for, especially as a Canadian. It's something I could never imagine playing in. It, it's really a dream come true for me. Um, and it's been an absolute blast. Hopefully next time we hang out, it's going to be in person. I mean, selfishly, I'd prefer it to be in Miami. You know, sometimes it gets cold here in Toronto. Yeah, so we'll see. We start preseason here. Yeah. 
that that would be the first thing I'm trying to pitch in, you know, preseason there, and you could join this it. This is in Miami, two weeks, South Beach, sand, sun. It is what it is, man. It's, it's the perfect recipe for a preseason. Yeah. I, I wouldn't mind that at all. But, uh, yeah, really appreciate it, man. And, uh, yeah, this was awesome. Sounds good, man. Yeah. Anytime, all right? I hope to see you soon, brother.